it is a matter of life and death. Mosques in Mecca and Medina have been closed. The Pope celebrated Mass on an empty St. Peter's Square. The famous Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris held Easter Mass with less than 10 people. India, Italy, and France are in complete lockdown. Other countries are in the process of following suit. We cannot be lax. The previously issued guidelines on exempted services shall remain. This is a difficult decision to take, but I am convinced that this is the right decision. The evidence is clear. The repercussions of any premature end to the lockdown action is unimaginable. We must not lose the gains achieved thus far. We must not allow a rapid increase in community transmission. We must endure a little longer. I will therefore take this opportunity to urge you all to notify the relevant authorities if you or your loved ones develop any symptoms. I will also ask our healthcare professionals to redouble their efforts to identify all suspected cases, bring them into care and prevent transmission to others. No country can afford the full impact of a sustained restriction of movement on its economy. I am fully aware of the great difficulties experienced, especially by those who earn a daily wage, such as traders, day workers, artisans, and manual workers. For this group, their sustenance depends on their ability to go out. Their livelihoods depend on them mingling with others and about seeking work. But despite these realities, we must not change the restrictions. In the last two weeks, we announced relative measures such as food distribution, cash transfers, and loans repayment waivers to ease the pains of our restrictive policies during this difficult time. These relatives will be sustained. I have also directed that the current social register be expanded from 2.6 million households to 3.6 million households in the next two weeks. This means we will support an additional 1 million homes with our social investment programs. A technical committee is working on this and will submit a report to me by the end of this week. The security agencies have risen to the challenges posed by this unprecedented situation with gallantry and I command them. I urge them to continue to maintain utmost vigilance, firmness, as well as restraint in enforcing the restriction orders while not neglecting statutory security responsibilities. Fellow Nigerians, follow the instructions on social distancing. The irresponsibility of the few can lead to the death of many. Your freedom ends where other people's rights begin. The response of our state governors has been particularly impressive, especially in aligning their policies and actions to those of the federal government. In the coming weeks, I want to assure you that the federal government, through the presidential task force, will do whatever it takes to support you in this very difficult period. I have no doubt that by working together and carefully following the rules, we shall get over this pandemic. I must also thank the legislative arm 
of government for all their support and donations in this very difficult period. This collaboration is critical to the short and long-term success of all the measures that we have instituted in response to the pandemic. As a result of this pandemic, the world as we know it has changed. The way we interact with each other, conduct our businesses and trade, travel, educate our children, and earn our livelihood will be different. To ensure our economy adapts to this new reality, I am directing the Ministers of Industry, Trade and Investment, Communication and Digital Economy, Science and Technology, Transportation, Aviation, Interior, Health, Works and Housing, Labor and Employment, and Education to jointly develop a comprehensive policy for a Nigerian economy functioning with COVID-19. The ministers will be supported by the Presidential Economic Advisory Council and the Economic Sustainability Committee in executing this mandate. I am also directing the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, the National Security Advisor, the Vice Chairman, National Food Security Council and the Chairman, Presidential Fertilizer Initiative, to work with the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 to ensure the impact of this pandemic on our 2020 farming season is minimized. Finally, I want to thank the members of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 for all their hard work so far. Indeed, the patriotism shown in your work is exemplary and highly commendable. Hello, Nigerians. I have no doubt that by working together and carefully following the rules, we shall get over this pandemic and emerge stronger in the end. I thank you all for listening. And may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.